All right, welcome back to another edition of Sling Paint Gaming. I am Birdo, and this is the third ship of Wave 11 that was just announced. It is finally for Imperials. You guys have a turreted ship. I say you guys because I don't fly Imperials normally. Um, I do fly some Imperials here and there. But the Thai Aggressor Expansion Pack, I know Nims is extremely happy about this ship because you finally get a turreted ship. But there is some mixed feelings from what I'm hearing about on this ship, um, about the pros and cons to it and you know comparing it to other turreted ships and what have you. But let's just go right into this. I'm actually going to pull up this article before I go into um, the actual Wave 11. I love to do a little history on this and the whole Thai aggressor starfighter. You know, it's, you know, Sinar Fleet Systems built it. You know what it is. It's all Thai series. But... Tigress has sacrificed shields and armor for firepower and maneuverability. And I'm hoping, and what I'm seeing, based on what we will go to the picture and stuff, that it actually has that, you know, uh, that dial that, you know, mostly the Imperials, like like all two green two-speed maneuvers or something to that effect, um, but a lot more green maneuvers, a lot more maneuverability. You're probably going to see a one hard, maybe a one bank. Uh, I'm thinking, I don't know. Like I said, we don't know what we see until we they ex expose more information about this ship. But uh, it's part of the whole Onyx Squadron thing. Um, the Onyx Squadron it was, you know, you'll see it in the in the Tide Defenders. You'll see it in different other ships. But the Onyx Squadron was just a regular Starfighter Squadron that the Imperial, like an Imperial Navy. But like most Imperial squadrons, it's named after something dark to uh, in color to emulate Darth Vader's famous Black Squadron. So I mean, I'll include the information to the Wikipedia articles here. I love looking up this information because the Star Wars universe is just so vast. All right, but let me go right to the um, article itself so you guys can see this awesomeness. Check this out. If I can click my computer. There we go. Check that out. Look at that spread. And I love what FFG does here. It says, designed for the long mission supply chain range and tactical flexibility. The Tigress can engage foes and close within maneuverability. That's why I'm thinking it's going to have a great um, low speed dial or strike from afar with its powerful tor turret and ordnance. The Imperial pilots who flew the aggressor were especially trained with the ship's different weapons loadouts in order to leverage them in full effect. I love this because it does introduce the sink turret, which we talked about um, with the scum ship, the H6 bomber, um, the Skurge H6 bomber. But it also um, can it comes with a twin laser turret. This is the one thing, like you always seen the K-Wing, and K-Wing came with the twin laser turret upgrade card. Uh, now you have another ship that comes with the twin laser cur uh, turret upgrade card, which is nice. And you can fit this on an Imperial ship. Finally, the Imperials have this. Let me switch to a different view here. So, you guys, this is all of Wave 11. But let's go right into this spread. Make it one the hair small. There we go. Check this spread out. How killer is this thing? Now... Right off the bat, I'm looking at it. You got four pilots. I can't see what the one lieutenant something starts with. It looks like it starts with a K. I'm trying, if you guys know, if you see the name or you know the name, definitely put it in the comments below. But you do see a new pilot called Double Edge. I couldn't find anything on this pilot Double Edge on who Double Edge was and what his backstory is. But you go from the lieutenant something with a K with a pilot skill value of seven, you drop right down to a Double Edge to a four which is a unique, but then the interesting, you have the Onyx Squadron, which is a five, and then the Sinar Specialist, which is a two. Now look at the two. You have a two for 17 points, right? That's the only point values that you see here. I'm wondering what Lieutenant is going to be at. I'm wondering if he's going to be probably in that mixture of maybe 19, 20, 21, maybe 22 points, give and take, depending on his ability and what have you. Um, but for pilot skill value 7, it's nice because I do think that you're probably going to get the EPT slot because I do see something extra. It looks like when you line up things here, I'm wondering if you're going to get the elite pilot uh, slot. So you could potentially put VI, jump up to a 9 um, if you wanted to, to have a turn that's up there. So it's going to be definitely interesting what you're going to see what comes out of this. The stat line. Two attack, just like most turreted ships that, um, or I'm rephrase that, most ships, most like TIE fighters, TIE series, always two attack. Um, and in most turrets, like the K wings and Y wings, the you know the turreted ships, they only have a primary value of attack of a two. Um, the Hawks, we won't get into. That's a different story for a different ball game. I'm still trying to figure out why they even did that. Um, but anyway, but for this ship, it's got two primary attack, two agility. Okay, I like that. 
Um, I'm actually, I'm from a Rebel player, I'm liking that because I don't see the three agility, which is good, but still two agility. I mean, that's pretty decent. Four hull, one shield. Okay. Uh, you know, a little different than the normal, um, like a TIE fighter, just hull and no shields, but at least it's like kind of like TIE, TIE FO-ish, but maybe with one extra hull. I like that. Okay. And for 17 points for the policy value too, I like that. Also, you get a focus target lock and barrel roll, which I'm liking that you have the barrel roll option on the ship. A lot of like the K wing, you know, K wings does have the advanced slam, um, and you can put vector thrusters on the ships. So it, I mean, but having barrel roll as an action frees up the mod slot to do different things um, that you could put there. But look at all these tokens. I mean, the standard tokens. I don't see anything special. Um, you do see the focus shield, one shield token, target locks, and um, stress and what have you. The the plate the name plate looks just like the regular name plate there no special turret action so he doesn't have a primary turret weapon it has to have a turret upgrade card. Um, looking at the dial you see the two green banked right bank maneuver so I'm I'm thinking that this is going to be very tie ish maybe tie interceptor ish where it's going to have a, maybe and it's going to have a, an awesome um, one speed maneuvers and two speed maneuvers probably a lot of greens in there. And I would think because they call out the maneuverability in the article, you're probably going to have a lot more maneuverability as far as speed and depth or for how far range-wise how you can far go with the ship. So it's going to be definitely interesting. All right. So you can't really see, like I said, with the you know what the abilities are. You see a once per round with double edge and when something with one f looks like focus, defender, but I'm not sure what that is. Like I said, I'm not going to try to anticipate uh, or assume what anything is. But for the upgrade, you'd see a double missile slot. That's interesting. Double missile slot, so it's you, which is nice because if you want to outfit double missiles, how many times you go always get a ship and you go and put one set of missiles on there? You know, wouldn't you love to get an extra set of um, like an extra munitions? Now, interesting that you can't. They didn't do a missile torpedo slot, so you can't do extra munition so you got to pay the full cost of two missile slots so that's going to be interesting so if you wanted homing missiles like well, I guess five points or whatever you got to pay 10 points if you want two of them on there so little interesting on how they did that so not putting a torpedo slot for the extra munitions but still cool that it's got double it's got two missile slots and you can see the turret slot right there all right so i'm going to go right into the cards that you see right here in front the first card looks like, and I'm assuming, is a double-sided card because it says intensity exhausted. So I'm wondering what the other side says, intensity allowed, redeemed, whatever, who knows. Um, but it says small ship only, so that it opens up for Rebel and Scum as well. Dual card, and it says at the end of the comet phase, you may spend one focus or evade token to flip this card. And it's two points, and it's an elite, uh, elite, ta um, elite pilot skill. I'm not sorry, elite pilot ta um, talent, so EPT slot. So I'm interesting what the other side is going to be. I'm thinking it's going to help out. You can see the person looks like a tie. Um, it could be double edge. Um, that's in here that says the pilot in themselves, and it looks like a tie fighter cockpit. You, uh, you know, like I said, this is going to leave a lot of speculation. They didn't release too much with all these Wave Eleven ships, um, but enough teasers to get the mind going, right? You see it does dual upgrade cards in here, so you definitely, this is has to be a dual upgrade card. It says dual card on here, so we're gonna, I would love to see what the other side is. All right, the other thing is we kind of went to this with the, um, the Scourge H6 Bomber, but um, it also comes with the same thing, sync turret. It says attack, target lock, attack one ship, even a ship outside your firing arc. If the defender's inside your primary firing arc, you may reroll a number of attack dice up to your primary weapon value. So as long as the defender's in that your primary firing arc, you can use this ability, re-roll. It doesn't require you to spend your target lock. It just says you have to have a target lock on the ship that you're firing at. Interesting part is range 1 to 2, 3 dice, 4 points. I'm a little on the fence on this, but with the maneuverability, the barrel roll, right, and the pilot skill value being of 8 for the highest pilot on in this, in this slot or in this expansion set, I think it's definitely gonna it may help out. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because anything with three attack dice is always hard. Now, this if it was range two to three, it would help you from that perspective because it did talk about long range. But for the sink turret, it's just four points, range one to two, three dice. I'd be very surprised if anybody plays with this. I, I'm I, I'm really I mean I do like the ability for the rerolls, so it helps with that. But 
you have to have a target lock on it, so it's just interesting in order to fire it. So if it's per if a person's already in my firing arc, like I said, it's just interesting. I'm on the fence with this card. It does come with the next card, Twin Lanes of Turret. We know this card. Everybody either hates it or loves this card. Twin Lanes of Turret, three attack dice, range two to three. Attack, perform this attack twice, even against a ship outside your firing arc. Each time this attack hits, the defender suffers one damage and cancel all of the dice results. Six points. Everybody knows it's, on, you know, Y-Wings, K-Wings, you name it. You can see the the Kanan Biggs lists um, with the Ghost and the Double Tap Phantom with Zeb on it. With the, so you get Double Tap um, Twin Laser Turret. So it just, Twin Laser Turrets is just the nasty thing. A lot of Imperial plays always hated Twin Laser Turrets. That's why you always see a lot of Auto Thrusters being played. Um, or Arc Dark just trying to get into that range one donut hole that's around those ships. But this, like I said, it just, it gives finally the Imperials that. Now, interesting part about the Twin Laser Turret, a lot of people, now think about it, if it's six points, and let's say if you want to put on a sign or a specialist, which I like because on a gold squadron pile, which is a pile of skill value too, it keeps it the same pile of skill value. This is 17 points. For 17 points, put a turret on here, plus six points, I'm at 23 points. Okay, I th I think what they sacrificed in Hull and Shields, comparing this to a Y-Wing, is they gave you Barrel Roll as one of your action bars, and they gave you a better dial. Now, does that work? Does that not work? I think what a lot of people are talking about, especially Imperial players, they would love to see this to be compatible with a Y-Wing. But I, I just, you know, it's I'm on the fence because... You know, one of the things what I love about the Y Wings is they do got enough hull and shields to take the barrage and, and just and deal out those TLTs. You know, where do I see this fit in from an Imperial you know perspective? Is this just filler? Like if you have twenty three points and you want to put it a turreted ship and kind of give a wide spectrum of what list you're building, so you can have an arc dodger, a turreted ship, and something else that gives you options. So there's there's a bunch of different options here. Am I loving this? Probably not, but I think I think Imperial players especially would like this because it gives that turreted option. This ship can fly in the back with twin laser turret for 23 points, and it just pecks away while it lets its arc dodges do its work. That's a potential out, you know, arc dodges like, you know, I'm going to say like some of the TIE Defenders, Soon Tier, Carnajax, Vader, you name it. Um as far as the aces on the Imperial side, and then this ship just rides in the back and just gives that heavy, you know, big TLT gun um, to you know to pop away a couple extra shots. So that's the way I look at this. The other card that you see here is un, um, which is we actually got the card here. They spoiled it. It says unguided rockets, three attack dice, range one to three, so it's got the full range, and it says for two points, this requires a double missile slot. Now, it says attack focus, so you have to have a focus. Attack one ship. Your attack dice can be modified only by spending a focus token for its standard effect. Let me read that again. Your attack dice can be modified only by spending a focus token for its standard effect. Now, does this... So, I have to have the focus in order to shoot this. Your attack dice can only be modified... So, it can't be modified by anything else ex except for my focus... So I'm um, modified, like meaning like I they can't do Kanan's ability where I drop it down a value, or modified by itself, actually meaning modified like I turn it to a target lock or a hit or something to that effect. I'm still I, I'm on the fence with this card because for two points and it's requiring a double missile slot. I'm I let me know if I'm missing something. I might be missing something here, but I just don't see the purpose of this. Um, you know, maybe to help out with range, but still, it's attack three dice. It's you know, but modified. Like I, I must be missing something with this, but it'd be interesting what the forums and what the comments say with this particular unguided rockets and what some of the builds start coming out of this. But it's just it's just interesting with the double missile slot. The other card that they do spoil is lightweight frame, and lightweight frame. Right, just I have it up here from the X Wing Miniatures wiki here, just so you guys can see it. It's a tie-only modification. <laughs> it says, when defending after rolling a defense dice, if there are more attack dice than defense dice, roll one additional defense dice. You cannot equip this card if your agility value is three or higher. So two points. It's a modification 
That's the other card that you actually see in this spread right here on the side there is lightweight frame. So that pretty much all the cards are pretty much spoiled except for the double side, the other, other side of this uh, intensity exhaustive double sided dual card. So that's pretty much the whole thing with this uh, Ty Aggressor expansion pack. I'm excited for, I'm, you know, I'm definitely going to pick one up for my, um, for having my collection because I have at least one of every ship. But I'm excited for Imperial Place because now they have a turreted option. Now, yes, the Decimator is a turreted option, but to outfit a turret upgrade card like Twin Laser Turrets, Imperials never had that, and now they do. So it's definitely going to be interesting on what they put together as far as the builds here. <laughs> they, are, is somebody going to try to do four of these? Um, and potentially with some other upgrades because four of these put 23 points times four. You still got eight points to deal with. Um, do you put maybe the two point double missile slot on each one to outfit both? Uh, but like I said, I still don't see, um, I'm, unless I'm missing something with the unguided rockets, I just don't see the love with there. But, or maybe do you, you know, I'm not sure what the point cost for Onyx Squadron. Maybe that might help you in the middle of the ground. You might get an EPT slot. Who knows? I'm not sure because you can't really see. I don't think you do based on what I'm seeing here. But it'll definitely be interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Tie Aggressor, I'm lo I really lo I really would love to see what this ship does, especially for Imperial play. How this is going to fit in lists. Um, I really think it's going to be a support ship, especially with Palp being nerfed. A lot of people are questioning. What you know? What other ship do I put into place? Do I still keep the Upsilon class shuttle? Do I still keep the Lambda class shuttle in the mix here? Do I still even play Palp, Palpatine as an you know as an option? You know this might open the door to another option as I can still play my Aces. Yes, I don't have the support of Palpatine, but I can have a turreted ship, and potentially if I do my lists right, I can potentially might have two turreted ships. Like I said, depending on how you outfit it, uh, and. You might not have two turreted ships with both twin laser turret, but you might have one with twin laser turret and one with something else, maybe the synchronized, uh, the sync turret. I mean, it's some options are out there for Imperial players, especially with a mega leader combination and the cost and some maybe some of the other point ships. You know, the, the whole thing with Imperialists is a lot of usually arc dodging aces, um, and they have that low agility. But having a turreted ship that has barrel roll naturally, I really like that. I think that just opens up the ballpark to a lot of different options uh, for this list. The other, um, let me go back to the preview here. You can see the actual packaging there. It just looks like a regular tie. It almost looks like a tie advanced uh, in a lot of ways um, with the, you know, so the turret can still work. Um, so they cut down the the sides there a little bit to make that fit. But like I said, I, unguided rockets is still, I'm still baffled by that. Um, but, uh, this is some cool stuff coming from the Imperial players. I think Imperial's going to play that. As far as when this is going to drop the whole Wave 11, I'm not sure if there's a release date that's been talked about, but it just gives different things. Um, you know, it's interesting when you start putting lists together, and some of the list builders, I think, have already updated this to include some of these uh, the ships and what have you. Um, the point cost, especially for this turreted ship, is going to be interesting, and it's going to be definitely opening. Um like I said, I'm just I, for me, I don't like turreted ships that are slow, right? That are not maneuverable, um, because you know, like the Y wings. One of the biggest problems with the Y wings is they're not maneuverable. Their dials horrendous. But you put four TLTs on the board, it's a formidable match to try to take down that much hull and shields. This this I see as a support ship flying on the outside, just you know, as a gunboat, just you know, with a TLT, just. Take, you know, taking away a couple different shots. There's, like, there's a whole bunch of different options that you can do here. So it, it'll be interesting on how the Imperial players put this all together. So we'll see. All right. So that wraps up all three videos for Wave 11, the previews. When they, As they release more articles, we'll talk about exactly what we're seeing, some of the combinations. Like I said, this is still new. But, I mean, all three ships really opened the doors up for certain different areas. You know, the bombers, especially for the for scum. Um, you have the turreted action now for uh, um, for Imperials, and then you have for the Rebels. You have a 180 firing arc small base ship. I mean, that's pretty powerful with three attack dice right off the bat. That's I love that. So I think really Wave Eleventh, Wave Eleventh, Wave Eleven. F, you know, FFG was really listening to what people want to see, people want to play, and here you go. You got 
it's all right here, all Wave 11. All right, if you guys like this video, give it a like below. If you don't like it, let us know why. Um, I've seen a couple of sometimes we get a couple of dislikes. I would love to know why. Um, also, if you guys want to subscribe to our channel, definitely hit the little subscribe button down below. It's like right here. Um, that lets you know when we release more content. And we usually are pretty good with releasing content almost every day. We, you know, we take a break here and there. Um, but definitely check out all our content that we put. We have a whole bunch of other videos. Also, if you want to support us, check out our Team SBG. The link's below. That's if you want to be part of the whole Sling Paint Gaming thing and become a team member um, and memberships and all that stuff. That really helps support us do more stuff. And you get a whole bunch of cool swag that, we, uh, that we've been sending out every month. Uh, also, check out our uh, token store. We sell tokens to help support what we do here, all the lights and cameras and actions and all the fun stuff, and and send us to, uh, to a lot of events so we can record events and what have you and get some action. And also check out a, our apparel store, some T-shirts, some really cool designs, some old school sling paint stuff and some new stuff and all that stuff. Again, the links are down below for our store links. Also, make sure you check out our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and check out our website, slingpaint.com, and our community area, big growing community area. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to wrap this up with Wave 11. Let, us, let me know what you think. Leave it in the comments below. And always remember, when you sling more paint than your opponent does, you're probably going to win. Thanks, guys.